Good evening and welcome to We the People. Yet again, a rape on the outskirts of the national capital in Gurgaon, an area that many describe to be the BPO capital of India, has grabbed headlines and has brought the public focus back on whether India is a country that can ever provide a level playing field to women professionals, to women in the workforce. We want to say that women have the same opportunities as men. But if our cities are not safe for women, if our working environments are not safe for women, if the fact of a woman being on a night shift working after 8 p.m. has to become a point of legal and national debate, then are we really giving women equal opportunities? On the program today, we're looking not just at what happened in Gurgaon, but what happens in cities across India every day. Many people were quick to criticize the administration of Gurgaon for suggesting that employers need to take special permission if they want to hire women after 8 p.m. What most of us did not realize at that point is that the police and the administration were merely quoting ancient laws. That's right. Those are the laws. Employers need to take special permission if they want women on their work workforce after 8 p.m. at night. So are the archaic laws part of the problem rather than part of the solution? Or is this a country which may be described as no country for working women? Let me start with Manish, if I may. Manish, wearing also your lawyer's hat and your political hat, what I want to ask you is when I look at the laws, and you look at some of these laws and you discover it's only in 2005 uh, that the centre actually amends the law, uh, the factories uh, uh, amendment to allow women to work in factories on the night shift. And you're, you're going, this was a country that gave universal voting rights to women from the time of independence. But in 2005, we think that we are doing sort of a landmark legislation by allowing women onto the night, onto the night shift, as it were. Why do we not hear more of a human cry over these absolutely absurd laws in parliament? Barkha, I entirely agree with you and the reality is that notwithstanding the amendment in uh, large parts of the country it is not being implemented. You know, I can tell you uh, the case of my own constituency, the textile industry has been fighting for a very, very long time whereby they want uh, women to be allowed to work uh, during the night shifts and unfortunately uh, the state uh, administration or the local administration, you know, feels that they cannot provide the security for them to uh, really allow that to happen. So while there may be a enactment on the uh, statute, but how much it is being implemented, I really don't know. And I agree with you, it's uh, indeed most unfortunate because at the end of the day, if India is going to become a global power, if we are going to achieve all those ambitions that we've set out for ourselves by 2030, you know, equal participation of women in the workforce is paramount for that. And, and I think all of us around this country, you know, lawmakers, policy makers, the administrators, police have an equal responsibility to see that the state provides the security and unfortunately is, it's, it's, it's not happened. And, it's and part of the problem that the imp that under the various laws, because labor law is both both on the concurrent list and on the federal list, so states are able to legislate their own, own laws, is part of the problem that employers are not willing to take the full onus of providing security because employers may well turn around and say there's only so much we can do. Eventually, it's the state that has to keep women safe. Well, I think I agree with the employers absolutely because uh, there is uh, a limited amount which an employer can do and I think he must uh, shoulder that responsibility. But uh, the principal and fundamental responsibility for providing security uh, for life and liberty is of the state and the state cannot abdicate that. Now, why is it not happening? Is it because of stereotypes or is it because, Prejudice. you know, there is, there is less of police and, you know, there's been a huge exponential growth of population. We can go into all mm. those reasons and try and find justifications and excuses. But the bottom line is that the state cannot run away from its responsibility. And unfortunately, notwithstanding this, and I'm not trying to score a political mm. point here, whether it's Delhi or Calcutta or Bangalore, yeah. are so-called, you know, yeah. mega cities. Unfortunately, the reality is it's that they're unsafe the same for them. across the board. Minakshi Lekhi, look at this particular case. Uh, becomes even more complicated for the fact that the woman who says that she was raped is a young woman in her 20s. She's a mother of a three-year-old child. But she basically used to work outside, right outside a pub in a mall. Now, uh, and the, the police, and we'll be, we'll be playing out an interview that we did with one of the police officials in the area. The police, when spoken to, said, but this is not formal employment. So we can't actually make the employer liable for her safety. 
and, and, and then the question arises, the employer is not liable for a safety, the, the police say, well, you know, the, the rules were being violated. So who's liable for a safety? Both. Both. According to me, if somebody was to approach the court, uh, and, and not everything should go to court is another issue, but if somebody was to approach the court under Article 32, the uh, safety has to be ensured both by the employer as well as the police, as the state. Yeah. And, and in this peculiar case, uh, the uh, profit making is done because of this girl's employment outside or inside the pub. Either way, is by the pub owners. Yeah. And so they are responsible for the safety and security and providing her dignity, labor, everything else. NDTV's Cricket App. Android and iPhone, faster scorecard, special analysis, and much more. Download free. NDTV.com/apps.